Hey everyone, Kenan Profi here. Welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this video, we're going to use geometry nodes to draw cliffs and rock formations in Blender. So this is a fairly simple geometry nodes use case, but I think you'll find that it has a lot of different diverse applications for just making organic shapes in Blender and quickly generating uh, something like rocks or cliffs inside of Blender. So uh, if you like this video and you get some value out of it, be sure to like and subscribe. And then as always, if you want to download this file, you can grab that by becoming a member of my Patreon link in the description. Let's jump into Blender and draw some cliffs. Like many of my tutorials, I'll press A inside of Blender to select everything and X to delete. And then I'll press Shift A and add in a Bezier curve. You can tab into edit mode and just delete those vertices. And now uh, that'll allow you to just draw your own shape. Woohoo, now you have a curve. I'll press Shift A and add in a plane. Scale that up for a ground plane reference. And now with our curve selected, let's jump into geometry nodes. And I'll create a new geo nodes network. I don't actually really need the spreadsheet too much, so I'm just going to close that out. All right, so the group input is our curve. Group output is our final result. And we want to instance points along our curve to make a nice sort of rock formation. Let's go ahead and add another kind of vertical cliff here like that. So shift A, I'll do a curve to points node and drop that in right there. And you can set this from count to evaluated or length. I like length. Uh, the higher you set that number, the lower the density is going to be. So uh, somewhere around 0.5 is probably fine, or you could go one. Now I'm going to use these points to instance something on the points. So we'll do an instance on points node and drop that in right here. And everything disappears because uh, there's nothing to instance. So we need an instance object and we can just you can do anything. You could make a collection of objects. Uh, that might be more interesting uh, for our purposes we'll just use a cube right in the geonodes network so you can just drag this mesh cube right into the instances and now we have cubes all right and then i like to uh on the z-axis just uh crank up you know woohoo crank up this a bit so that there's some vertical height maybe like 2.75 somewhere around there just to get a little more geometry in the scene i'm going to crank up the vertices on this we'll just go to six for there uh, that's going to come in handy for remeshing later on now for the scale and rotation you can just add some random values just by doing random value um, and then for this will be for the scale i'll do one to two and just keep that as a float value so now we have random scale in there and then shift D duplicate that random value node this time set it to vector and now you have X Y Z minimum X Y Z max so we can feed that into the rotation and I'll just zero out the X and the Y and then spin the Z infinitely on 360 degrees so now you get uh, just infinite rotation of uh, possibilities there and that just breaks up the silhouette of your sort of cube shape like that. So now you see uh, kind of the, the beginnings of a, a sort of low poly rock formation. You can see what we get if we just continue to draw. Get more cubes just generated. <laughs> and of course, cranking up the scale, you can start to get different interesting looks as well. I'm trying to keep this really simple. You could go really advanced with the actual shape of this just by uh, modifying this object. So if you want to just play around with your own setup, make custom objects or create a, a group or a collection of objects or modify this, the shape and size. Everything really changes the total look of your setup just by making small tweaks to that. All right, so after the instance on points node, we need to make this a real mesh that we can then add some noise to. So I'm gonna press Shift A and realize these instances with the realize instance node. I'll do a mesh to volume node which converts everything to a volume and I'll set the density of this to three and the the voxel amount will uh, could you know dramatically change your overall formation you don't want to go too high with this because uh, otherwise it just looks like you know cubes again uh, but you also don't you know want to go too low because then you'll just get uh, you know nothing <laughs> 
go to 10, then you get, get kind of the reverse. So uh, somewhere at the default, 64 is probably actually pretty good. And then we'll do the flip of this. We'll do volume to mesh right after that. And now we're getting more of, uh, you know, an, an actual like blob like mesh that we can work with. You can uh, adjust these different values, grid, amount, or size, get, gives you different calculations of your remesh here. I like to set this to amount, and then the voxel amount, I'll do 120, make it a little bit higher density right there. And then what I like to do at this point is triangulate my mesh, and that just helps a little bit with the remeshing process. You get some more even geometry right inside there because remember the goal ultimately will be to displace this with some noise di displacement so triangulate easy way it doesn't look pretty you know <laughs> if you're if you're wanting really pretty topology that's not this tutorial i also want to further kind of retopologize this a little bit by uh, merging some vertices so merge by distance and that'll get rid of some of this uh, sort of blockiness i'll just set this to about a 0.3 uh, maybe I'll go 0.5 just to collapse some of those in. Uh, you can drag this around, just see the different. You, you don't want to go too far with it. Maintain the shape, uh, but also just kind of round out some of those janky edges. Get you a nice uh, piece of usable geometry to displace. So now let's do a set shade smooth node, and this will make it all look a little bit better. Now it's starting to look a little more like usable geometry. Um, so before we add our displacement, it's probably not dense enough. You'll notice we've uh, we've remeshed it. We've done <laughs> it might seem like uh, going backwards, but because uh, you're starting with higher density and then remeshing. Uh, but the goal is just to get to this point where you can then add more topology to it um, and then start building detail on the shape. So as long as you're happy with the actual basic basic level structure. Uh, that you're generating these are your kind of the, the simplest form of your cliffs and then with that merge by distance node just use the uh, draw function of your curve to draw more geometry in there which starts to get really fun all right so let's add a bit more topology here i'll do shift a and i'll go ahead and subdivide this mesh you could do um, a subdivide or a subdivision surface I like to do subdivide at this point and then a subdivision surface at the end. And you can see now we're getting already a little bit more of a sort of rock cliff like structure. But obviously we need to add some displacement to it. We can do that with a set position node. And then we'll use this offset socket to feed a texture in there to offset our our whole geometry here. Now uh, this is where you can start to get vastly different looks in your setup. Uh, so this is all totally up to you. But I like to start with a wave texture just to get some nice ripples, some horizontal ripples in my cliff, get that sort of layered rock look. So I'm going to drop in a wave texture and I'll take the color output into the offset right there. And that's not really the look I'm going for. So we need to uh, offset this by 0.5 on the X, Y, and Z because uh, of the way the set position node works. You can see how it sort of moves our entire mesh. So let's do a vector math node and drop that in right here. And we'll set this to subtract and we'll set this to 0.5 on the X, Y, and Z. And now you can see we're just getting displacement. It's not moving our mesh along the grid there. Uh, but obviously this looks terrible and not at all what we want. So let's set the scale down to something more reasonable like 0.5. Uh, that's still probably too strong. Let's go 0.2. There we go. And now instead of along the X, I'm going to set that to Z. So now we're getting kind of more of that stacked rock look that I was telling you about. Uh, and we can crank up the detail and the distortion, of course, so that it's more rippled in there. And then we can adjust detail roughness. You don't want to go too crazy with this, uh, but crank it up a little bit just so it looks not as extreme. But now, obviously, it's just it's doing way too much displacement. We want to bring that back some. Let's duplicate this vector math node and we'll set this one to multiply. And now we can use this as the factor amount of how much displacement we want on our object. So I can set this to maybe 0.2 
And there you can see now that's looking way better as far as actually distorting it and making it look like a cliff shape that's layered with different rock shapes in there. Um, and then of course you can adjust how many of those layers of rocks are kind of piled on there. Uh, but I really like, you know, kind of the big chunky look. You go too many, you start to notice repeatable patterns, but something like that is looking pretty cool. You could stop there as far as the noise displacement, um, or you could just add a bit more overall noise to it. So uh, I think that's what I'll do. I'll just do one more layer. I, of course, you love Voronoi textures. Um, those can give you some nice big cell patterns or just uh, a simple noise texture if you drop that in. And then you can take the color output once again into the offset of that. What I like to do with this noise texture is just grab a vector math node and multiply it by the normal of the object so that it just um, displaces evenly throughout the whole mesh outwards like that. So you can see that looks uh, you know, really ridiculous. This is just another method of getting rid of that offset. So I can shift D duplicate like that. And now I have the amount of noise texture that I'm putting on the object. And I might for this, just while I'm dialing in the noise, uh, grab this set position node where our wave texture is and press M just to disable it. That way I can focus on just the noise texture being applied to my object here. Um, and then I can adjust the scale to be, you know, something interesting if you want big warbly noise all over your object. And I would recommend really layering a lot of different uh, displacements here. Um, don't just do one because you could do really small noise by cranking this up really high. Um, and then of course, cranking up the detail. All right, I'm liking the look of that, but I want my geometry to have a little bit more resolution. So I'm gonna add, I already subdivided the mesh. You could subdivide it again, um, but I, I also just like the calculation of a subdivision surface. So you could add that in right there and you can see uh, how nice that's looking, way more like rock. And then if we bring back our set position node with our wave texture, and layer that on top, um, you can see what we're getting starting to look really, really cool. We might have some competing noise in there with things overlapping too much. So I might take my noise texture down a bit and then you can just dial in your wave texture as well. You don't want them to you know, compete too much uh, or maybe you do, <laughs> totally up to you. Just with those two displacements, we're getting a really cool cliff formation and it's procedural so you can draw more of these and you'll get more formations in there wherever you draw your curve um, and then of course you can edit them as well so just grab a bunch of points move them around change your whole formation delete all the points you know and completely start over if you want so you get the idea. You could continue going, add more detail, more distortion. And then of course the final cherry on top is going to be your uh, lighting and texturing and rendering. I'm not gonna go into building the shader for this, but I will provide you with just a free simple shader uh, that you can download. I'll give the link in the description. Uh, just download it and you can apply it. All you'll do there is just append in that shader. And then the way you apply the shader is just right here at the very end. Um, right, I suppose you could do it at any point. Uh, just add in a set material node, and then you can select your material right there, and it'll apply it. It's a procedural material, and it uses the normal of the object to uh, calculate where to put kind of a green moss on top. Uh, and then you'll notice there's some added detail of some ridges in the middle as well. So you can see it's faint, but there's kind of some green uh, rocky moss just calculated based on the normal of the object. So of course, feel free to check out that material and uh, just adjust it however you want. And like I said, it's fully procedural, so you'll be able to just draw and add more cliffs. The material will be right there with you. <laughs> My shapes are getting a little ridiculous, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, draw cliffs, draw rock formations. Everything's procedural and fun and artistic. And hopefully you can use this method uh, to create some really awesome stuff. And don't forget as well, probably the coolest thing about geometry nodes is the ability to package all of this up into a nice, easy to use tool. So any settings that you want to have control over, whether it be the density 
or the shape of the cube, you can just feed that into the group input. So maybe uh, the scale, for instance, is, would be a really good one. Feed that into the group input and you'll see that setting appear on the right hand side. So if I press in, I can uh, rename this rock scale maybe. Uh, and then I could just crank up this in my modifiers panel and crank up the overall scale of my rock formation without having to dive into my actual geometry node setup. And you can see just by doing that, how different of a look you get, you get, uh, you know, <laughs> larger scale cliffs and rock formations. But again, that's the great thing about the procedural system. Uh, the material should all still work even by adjusting things like that. And then you go into edit mode with your curve and you'll be able to continue drawing uh, just different cliff formations. Might take longer, it's generating more polygons on the fly like that, uh, but you know you get the idea of what it's doing there. So I built mine out to have control over a lot of different settings. You can certainly do the same for yours, uh, but just wanna keep that in mind. That's probably the best advantage of geometry nodes is being able to do that inside of uh, the modifiers panel. So as you can see, you can build on this GeoNode setup and make this a lot more complex or kind of dial back in the complexity depending on the needs of your scene. Shout out to all my Patreon members, really appreciate you guys. If you wanna grab this file, you can do that by heading over to my Patreon and downloading that. The material of course will be free, link in the description. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. Like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.